and Mike Green with Optic Cyber Solutions. And today I'll be providing a high-level overview of the TT&E, some of the key benefits, uh, tips for development and execution. So that's helpful for your organization, but not too stressful. So test training exercise, sometimes referred to as TT&E or TTE. Uh, essentially, um, comprehensively, a structure activities performed by an organization to uh, test the, any type of emergency plan. So those would be business continuity plans, incident response plans, um, any other type of um, emergency plans that a business would have. Um, the way they, they want to test for efficiency and completeness. Um, there are three specific components that comprise test training exercise, uh, namely the test, which is the actual uh, walkthrough to evaluate performance of a specific component or system. Training, which focuses more on the um, human resources part of it, so training of the individuals and improved skills and knowledge, and then ultimately the exercise, which is a simulation um, based on a scenario where you kind of want to walk through your plans, your processes, um, and sometimes even exercise uh, physical or um, technical capabilities to ensure that um, you, know, you can actually uh, respond in an emergency. Um, TTE is defined and described in uh, NIST 884. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive document. I'll kind of boil down the salient parts um, during this, this walkthrough. Um, and as I mentioned, really the TTE and um, for organizations is really the, it's a key preparatory or part of an overall comprehensive approach to ensure that any emergency process that you have in place um, are uh, efficient, they can be executed when needed. Um, and a TTE is a requirement for CMMC, many um, other types of uh, certification programs, CMMC, FISMA, and FedRAMP. Some of the key benefits of a TTE include identifying gaps in emergency plans. And really the goal here is to uh, ensure that you have sufficient scenarios, um, essentially real world or um, simulated exercises where participants can walk through and actually test the different response strategies that are defined in the relevant emergency plan. So incident response, as an example, if you have a specific scenario that's, that's defined there, um, this will help to identify any gaps if you have a scenario based on that specific uh, type of incident. Um, also, testing the response capabilities um, in a controlled environment. This is really key to allow, um, kind of bring the temperature down a little bit when you're walking through um, a scenario. Obviously, real-world scenarios can really be um, stressful uh, for many participants, for organizations, uh, depending on the scale. But this does allow participants to be able to um, exercise and test those capabilities within a, a controlled environment uh, without the, um, you know, if it's, if it's uh, real-world, without the impact of any harm or impact to the business. Also enhancing collaboration. This is really a key point for um, anyone involved in a response activity. To ensure there's um, efficient communications among the team members. Um, in a lot of cases you'll have uh, emergency plans that have communication trees, call trees, uh, slack channels, etc, cetera, etc cetera, defined within the plan. And as part of the exercise we want to make sure that what is defined is actually what's implemented in uh, real world situations. If there are any deltas identified, obviously you want to make sure those are documented and updated as you walk through the exercise to ensure that the, um, the documented processes for communication are reflective in the relevant plans. Also, uh, encouraging critical thinking problem solving skills. Um, depending on the, the uh, sophistication of the scenario, um, there may not be a defined uh, path within the, the plan itself. It may the plans may provide more general guidance for how the uh, participants will respond in an emergency. By having those um, more detailed uh, scenarios, you could actually walk through and kind of evaluate um, decision making. And even if the, you know there may be a missing uh, a role or a key decision maker that may need to, may need to be involved as part of the emergency that hadn't been anticipated initially, but you know may need to be folded into um, emergency plans. And then obviously reducing the impact of real life emergency. Um, as I said, you know in a lot of cases these tabletops or um, real world. At, um, uh, emergencies can be stressful. Having it in a simulated environment, you kind of bring down, as I said, bring down the temperature, but it does allow the organization to exercise these emergency plans to ensure they are ready um, to respond for any any type of emergency that the um, organization is, is currently testing for. To develop a TTE, you want to start by first setting goals and objectives for the specific TTE. Um, this would involve uh, essentially determining what you want to test. It could be a specific process, procedure, skills of the um, relevant participants, a technology, et cetera. Once you have that defined, you want to uh, develop and choose a realistic scenario. So it should be realistic for the organization or the specific type of plan to be tested, whether it's contingency plan, incident response, et cetera. It could even be based on a, an actual event that has occurred to the organization or something that may have been, you know, recently in the news or something. 
the, uh, the overall goal is to make sure that the scenario is a challenging scenario that will actually test the participants and the relevant plans. Um, next will be selecting those participants or key stakeholders. We want to ensure that um, all stakeholders defined in the relevant plans are actually included on the exercises <clears throat> to ensure um, a more real-world scenario. So if you have any uh, participants from differing departments or differing, uh, organiza uh, differing teams, or even sometimes third parties that may be part of an emergency response, those should be included as well. And then finally, preparing the uh, materials. So for uh, relevant TTNEs, you may have documentation materials like participant guides, exercise guides, things like that. And then also, depending on the type of exercise, you may have te specific technologies for functional exercises, as an example, if you want to uh, test the recovery of a system and things like that. So you want to ensure that all that is ready to go um, as part of the development or planning for the and developing of a TTNE. Two tips for ensuring a successful TTNE. Uh, first, assigning of roles and responsibilities. Uh, for participation during the exercise. So these roles should be assigned to the participant's real world uh, role. So if you have someone that operates as an you know, IT administrator or incident responder or key decision maker, um, that participant should be asked to uh, participate in the exercise in that role. <clears throat> uh, establishing clear expectation and guidelines. So the facilitator of the TTE should ensure that uh, the state of goals and objectives are clear to the, uh, to the participants. Um, an overview of the scenario, um, and then the expected outcomes as well. Um, another key item of, uh, for key for a successful TTNE are the uh, participation of and engagement of the participants. So facilitators should really um, in, encourage um, open and open discussion uh, by asking open-ended questions, uh, soliciting feedback. Uh, to really get the engagement among the various uh, team members during the, the TTNE. Uh, documentation evaluation um, of the exercise. So obviously, since this is the whole purpose is to test the um, the processes, procedures, um, and even sometimes the uh, personnel involved in the um, the exercise, we want to ensure that you're doing evaluation of the um, actual response efforts, depending on the, the type of response it is. We want to ensure we document and note any challenges um, during the exercises to uh, really understand the overall effectiveness. Uh, positive aspects should also be um, explored as well um, to ensure that they're you know, capturing the overall picture of the response. And then finally, incorporate any lessons learned. So any um, lessons learned as a result of the uh, response itself should be uh, incorporated into response strategies. So high level strategies uh, may need to be updated as well as tactics. If there are any um, tactical items that need to be uh, instituted or revised, that should be captured as well for consideration. I want to leave you with a few uh, resource that may be helpful as you develop and uh, exercise, execute TTNEs. Uh, the first one here in this 840, um, that document has, it has an overall uh, walkthrough of a TTNE, the process from start to finish. It also has a few sample exercise guides and exercise scenarios that may be helpful. Uh, the CISA tabletop packages, um, these are mostly cybersecurity focused and physical security focused, uh, but they do have scenarios. Um, test scenarios that can be leveraged, as well as uh, some templates like after action reports that may be helpful. Also, I listed here the uh, contingency planning guide, uh, NIST 834, and then uh, NIST 800 861 uh, security incident handling, as well, that may be helpful if you're building out a contingency plan or incident response plan. So I have some resources on our, uh, our website, Optic Cyber Solutions Task Resources. I'd help you along your cybersecurity journey. We have templates for uh, various programs, CMMC, uh, cybersecurity framework, risk management framework. Uh, so you may find some helpful resources there as well. Um, again, I'm Mike Green uh, with Opt Cyber Solutions. Thanks for watching.